Okay, so the hot, the hot tub. You have to make one. So, so what I suggest to people when they're going to build their cob house is that they make a hot tub first so that they get to test their soil and they get to have a hot tub to relax in while they're cobbing. And there's something about those hot tubs that just really brings all the elements together. It encourages you to be outside bathing, which is very expansive for the mind and the design process. And you really get to know the wind where you are because you've got the smoke going on. So you're learning, like it's a great first step on site. It attracts you to the site. It helps you go there when it's cold and wet, when you need to go there and see what it's like to help you design it. And makes you happy and contented when it's cold and wet. And then the other good thing about it is that you can start cobbing earlier because you have hot water to make your mix with. You have hot water to stick your hands and feet in. And or you at least have a bath if you're camping. You know, it makes it easier to stay longer, work earlier, and then work later into the season. So it's a great, wonderful, magical, multifaceted thing to have a, one of these hot tubs. And it really isn't a cob tub. It's a metal tub with a cob firebox and a chimney, which can be cob or metal or whatever. And the way it got invented was in these protest camps that I used to do in New Zealand when, when I was young and wild. Um, now I'm old and wild. Anyway, uh, we'd have a hot a tub that somebody donate and then we'd build a fire under it and you'd just get smoked out and the smoke would be terrible and you'd sit in the tub and you'd just be like, God, I need a long snorkel or, you know, it was wonderful to have the hot water, but it was so smoky. So that was the first seed of, gee, it'd be nice to have one of these out in nature somewhere without having to get so smoked out. And then when I started learning about, well, when I came, when I left the tropics, I grew up in the tropics and started learning about fires and heating places and stuff, then And then I had that workshop on the cob stoves, you know, so I got it that you can use cob to create stoves and that that makes it more efficient. So you're not wasting your wood your, or your, you know, you're not wasting as much of your wood by focusing the heat underneath the tub instead of just spewing it out everywhere. And then the other problem with the original tub was you'd burn yourself on the, on the edges. So the, so the, all these things conspired to help me in the eventual need where I was cobbing a bit lost. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we were working on that and I was staying there for a couple of months and they didn't have any baths. And of course we were covered in mud and they didn't really want all our mud in their plumbing system. And so then it left us cold hose to rinse off and you know, it just, and we were camping out and we just needed the luxury of a bath. So we thought, well, let's, let's put up a tub. They had all this junk laying around, you know. And so we got the tub and just kind of made it so the smoke wouldn't come out and wouldn't get in us and wouldn't burn us on the edges. And, and it was just a practical thing. And yet once we had it done, we got it that it was just this revolution. I mean, if everyone had a cob tub in this country, it would be a different world. It truly, it is so, it's such a powerful thing. It's such a simple, kind of weird thing. And yet it is so right. And anybody, I mean, I've had cob building, tub building workshops and parties. I mean, everybody is, gives up their fear of being naked at least in the night and you know takes turns in the water and the candles are going and the conversations are just so expansive and beautiful and anyway we had this tub and we obviously had a lot of fun and it was just 
it had to be a book. I just, it had to be shared with other people.